Gentlemen, welcome back to another episode. Today I've got Dr. K here, a psychologist. We viewed him over and over again on the channel. He's primarily been a little bit more on the blue pill side, but it seems like now he's turning around a new leaf and he might be a little bit more receptive to understanding the good intentions that the red pill does for masculinity. Or does he? Here we have him talking about Andrew Tate. We all know Andrew Tate has been on the news, recently arrested, and then uh, recently released as well. Here we've got a statement from him real quick, just so you can see. Well, 30 of them have statements in our defense. 30 saying we've done absolutely nothing wrong. Two, up to, two more of the mothers of our children. And two more have never even been to Romania. They've never even been here. They just found random girls we knew in other countries and made them sign pieces of paper. This is a setup. It's absolutely disgusting. Fair play to that judge who saw through the bull and let us free. And also, one more thing. The media is complicit. All of you are. When they first threw us in in jail when they first put us in there you're all running around saying human trafficker none of you said where's the evidence where's the proof where's the pictures where's the videos none three years later they do the same fucking bullshit and you're all sitting there going human trafficking i'm not a human trafficker clearly if you human traffic someone there is evidence this is a setup it's a stitch up the three prosecutors at decal in my house i said why are you here there's no case they said there's a case if we make one this is a fucking setup. Jesus. All of it is. And, and listen, quiet, quiet. I'm going to talk to you. Jesus. And here we have Dr. K on Andrew Tate and vulnerable men. So let's watch him. Trained to talk about it. Parents know how to talk about it, but no one knows how to talk about technology. People are at a loss. So I, I, I'm pretty optimistic. Like, I think, you know, we've seen some real turnarounds with some really hardcore incels. Um, I think a lot of stuff from Red Pill, frankly, is pretty good. So a lot of it is like, you know, they'll now advocate that you go see a therapist. They advocate there that you, you become independent. They advocate that you develop confidence. Part of the reason that these... You these need to do what you're supposed to do, not what you feel like doing. That's the difference between a man and a child. Every day. People are so successful is that they're the only ones that offer solutions. Yeah, you, you, by these people, you mean like the Andrew Tate Bugatti man influencers are, yeah. who are so, resonating so, I, so hard? I, yeah. I think a lot of people don't like to hear this and they don't really think about it. But why is Andrew Tate? Why do you think Andrew Tate is so successful? Yeah, well, they're resonating super hard with a certain demographic. And it's really easy to trash these guys. There's plenty to trash these guys for. Don't yeah. get me wrong. But we need to be listening and paying attention to why these guys are so insanely popular because yes. that's where the information is. Absolutely. And, and frankly, they're the only guys out there validating men's concerns, right? Some men's concerns right now. I, and I, so I com completely agree. That's my read on it, too. So so right yeah. now, if you're a man and you're struggling, people will tell you you're privileged. You shouldn't be struggling. That's the right. most common answer that men receive. Not okay? a single I heard right now. And so there's only one group of people who say, yeah, your life is here's how to fix it. And those tend to be these like toxic misogynistic influencers, right? We don't have healthy men saying, hey, I know your life is hard here. Now you see why I say where the toxic masculinity, where the misogynistic point of uh, counterpoint of views like a shield of armor. It's not offensive. It doesn't hurt me. If anything, you're actually just making me look better let me help you and by the way you don't have to become an asshole and misogynistic in order to develop confidence these two things don't have to go hand in hand there you go it's because misogyny doesn't really mean misogyny anymore right if you criticize a woman then you're called misogynistic the reality is women can be criticized just as much as men are and in the red pill space if you really watch not just a woman being critiqued but you watch the men being critiqued the men go really, really hard on the men. They actually hold them to a higher standard and much more accountable because you need to be realistic. You need to be hard on men. How are you going to pussify society if you're just coddling them and telling them what they want to hear? You're just pandering to their feelings. You're telling them what makes them feel better instead of what actually works. It's tough. And, and it's almost like you almost have to go through that phase, which hopefully it's a phase to get through the other side. I, I look, I would love also if it didn't involve being super gross and aggro for no reason. But it, if you think about it, it's almost like just gross and aggro. What, what do you have against being aggressive? Why does that 
make you feel insecure? What does that make you feel weak? Really ask yourself. That says a lot more about you than it really does about them. A person that walks around aggravated but doesn't need to be physically violent but is capable of being physically violent is a person who's developed that confidence and that experience through wisdom, through time. If you feel, what is it, um, insecure or essentially weakened or threatened by that kind of energy, it's because you lack it within yourself. You don't really have a respect for masculinity deep down. And it's coming out. It's pussifying yourself. And you're kind of like, oh, that's disgusting. When in reality, it's not. You shouldn't be. You should know, okay, if we were if we were really to disagree man to man, and he were to say something insulting to me, I could defend myself physically. I'm capable of doing that. Dude's hitting puberty, the, the emotional part of puberty really late in the game. Like if a 13 year old's like, yeah, bitches, this and that. You're just like rolling your eyes and you're like, oh, hormones. <laughs> you check your watch. You're like, it's another two years. But when someone's 25 and is doing that, you're like, Ugh, I don't want to be around this person. But it's not necessarily, it, it, it's all, yeah, it's almost like they're just going through that phase. That's not true. It's, it's kind of a little more funnier when you see a 25 year old do it. Uh, if they know how to hit the jokes, but yeah, for for I'm not gonna I'm not gonna disagree. For most guys, it's kind of cringe, right? When you're like, oh yeah, look at stupid woman, silly woman, like you, you hear you hear this in the street. This stupid, <laughs> this is <laughs> like that button without any context really makes it look dumb. Like especially if the joke falls flat. If, a, if you hear a feminist woman and then you make a joke criticizing what she said. Then it's funny. If you're just going out critiquing women simply for being women, then it just kind of come, it comes off as cringe. I don't disagree at all. Eight. And it's cringy and it's horrible, but it's horrible for everybody, especially them. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think another thing that we're kind of seeing is a lack of male leadership. So if, if you look at like, there's a really famous study on elephants, where if you look at like a adolescent elephants who are delinquents, the number one thing that leads to adolescent elephants being delinquents and like doing things like even sexual assault and all this kind of stuff is really? the absence Jeez. of uh, a dominant male elephant in the tribe. That's kind of true. So generally speaking, we, even when I was 13 and, and you know, I was uh, flexing my misogynistic wings and what put me in check was like other dudes, right? Like I, I joined a fraternity <laughs> yeah. in college and they're like, and there you go. hey, bro, like that's not cool. And I, it's funny because I, I work with some esports professionals, and I you see that's the brotherhood he's talking about. It's other men hold men accountable. Don't rely on a woman. Don't rely on your mother to hold you accountable because she can never physically put you down the way another man could. And that kind of physicality is so important because if you run around the world thinking that the law and that doing everything by regulations and that society's rules are going to protect me, then you will be a soft ass kid. Okay. Men will hold other men accountable. See this a lot too, where it's like when there's an older, wiser, normal esports, like old hand at esports who's like 24, and there's some 16 year old, like, hot stuff kid right like it's the 24 year old who kind of calms them down and i think what we're starting to see in our society is a, a lack of that yeah older male, male kind of like guidance because we're so online because there's online radicalization and this is where he gets it wrong it's not because they're so online why is it why is that the reason why are the reasons families are being ruined it all comes from decisions that people make who are making these decisions? Well, women are primarily making the decisions to divorce their husbands. So what does that mean? That factors in towards males being raised by single mothers. And what do single mothers like to do to their children, especially their young boys? They like to coddle them. They like to give them whatever they want. They like to spoil them. They like to make these young boys into feminine men, into weak men men why because all they do is cater to the woman they put the woman on a pedestal or the opposite might, might happen they might just really hate their mom because their mom might come with very bad characteristics in the sense of she's very irresponsible she doesn't know how to essentially lead this young boy towards adulthood she keeps him away from the father through every single case we see it time and time again with every single uh, divorce case that's happening in this country when it comes to child support when it comes to how often can the father see the kid 
Well, he can't if he has to actually pay the the, um, the woman child support when he's working 70 hours a week. Yeah, the system is not fair. The system is rigged against men. And that's why you're seeing this upbringing of essentially kids just they don't want to they don't want to go outside. They don't want to be around their mothers. They don't like the constant nagging. So they just lock themselves in their room. They play the video games. They plug in. They get addicted to prawn. They don't want to do much more. They reject masculinity. Why? Because the leader of the household, the mother rejects masculinity as well. So where's the respect for masculinity? How could they learn to trust and respect of other men if the women that are leading the houses don't in the first place? You know, because you're joining these communities where the people who are happily married with kids don't, you don't hang out in incel forums and I don't either. So there's a segregation yeah. of society where we're seeing more radicalization because like men are not helping men. And I know it's, That's interesting. it's, it's vogue to blame women, but I think like we're just as much to blame. No, of course, I 100% agree. I remember when I played football in middle school, there was this like thuggish kid who would- Remember, men are to blame in the sense of you pedestalize and you simp women, which means you are essentially giving women this Delulu mentality. You're building that Delulu mentality because you work so hard to give her money that she feels she deserves, that, fee that she feels she's entitled to, but she hasn't actually earned. So men that cater towards women delusion are the weak men that are harming society, that are harming masculinity. It's not the guys that are like Andrew Tate preaching the actual forms of hardship. You need to do what you're supposed to do. He's from a poor uh, area and he had transferred into our school and his brother showed up. And he was also like this kind of gangster dude. And I remember a lot of us were trying to impress him by being like, yeah, dumb girls, they don't know anything. And I remember he was like, guys, 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 don't even start that talk. I know you don't really mean it. I know you're just trying to front, but we don't, you, you think you're hard? Hard guys don't talk like that. Yeah. Hard guys respect their ladies. And I remember being like, what am I seeing right now? I've never heard this before from anyone, especially a cool, tough guy. And we immediately cut that shit out. Like nobody had another word of that crap for the rest of our middle school career. It was over. Yeah, and I, I think that's what's absent right now. Right. And that right there is called a gentleman, a gentleman, a gentleman respects not women for being women, but people in general if you don't want to be treated this way don't go around treating others this way respect others give them a chance to speak don't preemptively judge that they're just terrible people just based on the fact that they're just women yeah it's a joke we get it locker room talk exists okay this, this, this is the way guys vent this is the way guys try to work on their charisma and if there's no laughs then you know what you do you change the tune you change the subject a little bit that's all you really have to do most guys learn this at a young age. There's no way you're going to perfect this. There's no way you're going to instill this. Or you're going to evaporate this. Men need to make the cringe jokes in order to learn. Yeah, these jokes aren't really hitting. How could I make it funnier for most people to laugh at, right? How could I respect others just as I like to be respected? Then you need to actually instill what? A sense of religion, a sense of where are you getting your moralities from? Where are you getting your standards from? So, and I, I think there, there are some of, the, you know, some of these people who are, will study like male dynamics will sort of point out this. Some people attribute this to things like higher divorce rates and stuff like that. And I'm sure that that has something to do with it. But, Huge factor. Um, it, you know, I, I think it's really challenging because these people don't have somewhere else to turn. Yeah. They're full of resentment. They get rejected by society. People don't really give them a chance. Actually, that's not entirely true. Sometimes they get second chances, third chances and fourth chances and they screw them up over and over and over again. And then there's someone there who's got their arms open waiting to accept you and saying, yeah, your life is hard. Here's how I, I'm going to teach you to fix it. And then the other really scary thing that I think people have difficulty admitting is that a lot of that stuff does work. Like that's the other thing that we need to really like understand is that when you start devaluing other human beings, yeah, it makes it easier for you to relate to them with a lack of confidence. It does. Right? So yes. if I don't care about you, then I'm not going to be anxious about what you think of me. So it's a very, very toxic solution, but it is a solution. It, it is. The, the Remember that the biggest thing that's going to hold you back in life is your self-doubt. If you're constantly being rejected, 
it's because you're carrying this self-doubt around with you instead of actually dealing with it. And it's on you to identify where is this self-doubt coming from? Is it exterior or is it internal? Is it my environment? Because if it's your environment, really ask yourself, what are things you should be grateful for today that somebody else doesn't have? That's how you become a little more grateful. What have I done to earn this bread today? Why should I not be happy that I have these few things in my life that most people don't? That's how you start to slowly fix this idea of, oh, like I'm lonely. I'm, that, that means I should be depressed. No, you're lonely. But where can you find gratitude in loneliness? How can you actually slowly start to build? Okay, you know what? Maybe instead of just eating this bread by myself, I can actually split it with somebody else who needs it a little more than I do, right? Extending out your hand. Not that you're better than everybody else. Once you start to believe you're better than everybody else, then you're limiting your forms of self-growth. Sharing, caring, being kind, right? Being strict within yourself and then being strict with others because you hold them to a higher expectation. If you're constantly being rejected in the world, it's because you're not holding yourself to a certain degree, to a certain regard. And a lot of times you're letting yourself down, you're letting yourself down, and then when you speak to other people, they have that same they sense that same energy, so therefore they don't want to be around you. Remember, as a man, you learn very quickly that if you constantly victimize yourself, if you're constantly nagging, if you're constantly complaining, if you're constantly showing feminine characteristics where you're overly getting emotional and you're actually letting other people get under your skin, you will always lose. If you don't fix these little habits about yourself, then nobody's ever going to treat you differently because you're not entitled to be treated better. You earn it. You earn people's respect problem that I found from, again, from like doing the dating coach thing back in the day is you also screen out the high confidence, high quality f women that are going, would otherwise have been in your life. Because if you start going, I'm going to devalue people, like, okay, you just lost the top 20% of confident, well-adjusted, healthy women, because they're not, they're not going to sit around and deal with that. So that now you've got this other pool of sort of equally damaged people that might pair with you because based on your, your antics. And that's not good for either of you. Yeah, and it's so, this reinforcing cycle, this negative cycle. Uh, and, and Jordan, that, that, that's like, it's such a huge selection bias, which I don't think people in that community quite understand. Right. So sometimes, you know, men will view, or women will view relationships as transactional. They're like, oh, women mm -hmm. are just in it for the money or whatever. They'll yeah. say these kinds of things. And then Transactional it, in the sense of if your masculine duty is to provide and protect, what does she get in return? She gets provision and protection from the man that you've built. Yeah. That is a form of transaction. Every relationship is a form of transaction, but are you doing it from the intention of, oh, it's just transactional, there's nothing else to it? No, kindness, respect, trust, empathy, all these things are also important, but nobody will look at you if you prioritize empathy first. You, you as a man need to provide. You need to build resources. You need to better your skill sets. If you fail to do these things, yeah, you could be as empathetic as you like, but no woman will actually stick around. That's the truth, right? Or they, or you're actually going to put them in their masculine if they're the ones providing instead of you. And that's not a dynamic you really want to have. That's not a dynamic that works long term. If you act like that and you talk like that, the partners who are not in it just for the money, who are interested in building a life with you, won't date you, right? They'll, they'll receive your signals and they're like, this is not a good match. Whereas the women who are interested in transactional relationships will date you because you're saying, hey, this is transactional, right? I'm going to do this. So this is what you expect. And then there's a group of people who are okay with that. Like there's mm -hmm. always in the history of humanity, there have been transactional, heteronormative, uh, as well as homosexual relationships. Just remove the word transactional and insert the word responsibilities and duties based on gender roles so that we could build a family based on standards, ethics, spirituality, love, care. That's it. <laughs> I'm sure. All right, let's, uh, let's jump into the comment section and see what they have to say. Online dating is like diet soda. You never get to drink the real thing. <laughs> Damn, so pessimistic. Well, personally, I am a man and struggled greatly with depression. 
Self-isolation rage. But what pulled me out of it every single time is myself. So if you don't have self, you have nothing. You lose control and seek it in the wrong places. Addictions of many kinds, right? And addiction formulates from what? Coping mechanisms. A lot of the times we turn to drugs, smoking, alcohol, right? Uh, pornography, prostitution, video games. When it starts to hinder your self-interest and your productivity, that is when it becomes an addiction. When it starts to harm other people around you, that is when it becomes an addiction. If you enjoy it as a small reward throughout your day, it's not a big deal. Uh, you become an asshole. What can change this is taking responsibility for yourself and still actually improving yourself. Despite the shit you have gone through, recognizing that nobody will save you and society is broken so you must do everything you can do to bring integrity into your life keyword integrity where does integrity come from from the values that you have set forward in your life where can you get values from well i'd recommend reading the bible reading a few verses you don't have to have faith but you can start reading you can start looking there right uh, back into your life. I meditate in the morning and evening when I recognize I'm disassociating or getting angry, right? And this is good. Meditation in the morning when you're getting angry, right? Now you're becoming self-aware. Now you're actually starting to think about all the things that have happened in the past, how you're presently feeling. You're starting to soak it all in. You are not going to let your emotions control you, but you are going to be aware and be in control of your own emotions. This is a great way of doing it, right? or getting angry or the best way is hey if you're feeling very angry very frustrated punch a bag this is why mixed martial arts is important right you want to let the frustration out through your own stress through your own physical energy so that when you feel tired guess what it's hard to feel angry when you're exhausted when your body is shutting down because you put yourself through a strenuous workout it's hard right or you know you're really learning to identify why you're angry maybe it's because you're broke maybe you need to find a new method to make money right or maybe you're angry because your girlfriend's cheating on you and you're uh trying to get over that and you're trying to how can i how, like you feel that sense of rejection you feel that sense of oh damn i've wasted my time i've put all my money into this girl and you know what you have to let it go you have to walk away so there's many different lessons in anger and that's where stoicism comes in I do not push it down. I ask myself questions. I reach out to people, friends, whoever, whatever. I can do I can do never uh, I can do to never lose my joy again. I'm riding my bicycle daily, eating less and more healthy. I'm up to 100 push-ups per day and I'm about to join a gym community so that I can have other people around me who want to improve themselves. In the hollow, would you, would you must do everything you can do to keep yourself whole. It will take everything from you if you let it get up and go out. Wow. Very powerful. I'm underwhelmed. This only has 41 likes. Very powerful words very true i disagree with him when it comes to i do not push it down you only push down your emotions when somebody's crawling under your skin in stressful situations that's when i say you push down your emotions which means you don't show a reaction you respond and you don't have to respond aggressively you can respond in kindness right but if it calls for aggression then you do it in a tactical way not in an emotional way that's why pushing down your emotions is a skill set it's like lift it's like training your muscle and you're constantly lifting a hard weight what are you doing right you're lifting something that's very heavy or you know push you're pushing you're pushing you're doing push-ups you're pushing all that energy down right you're slowly controlling every isolated movement that's important that's a skill set it's hard to do that right you only do that through repetition through consistency so there you go that's a good lesson right there on uh, mindset <laughs> and uh, how Andrew Tate helps the world. Okay, gentlemen, do not forget and do not bother to leave a 
subscribe or like on this video if I have not provided you with any value, entertainment, or something that you can apply to your life today. Enjoy. And I'm out, gentlemen. Jesus.